Now to the race for City Hall and crunch time here for the would-be mayors of the Big Apple. The race entering the home stretch. We're now just 27 days from that September 10 primary. Now, as we reported last night, there's a new leader on the Democratic side, and I'm not the only one who's surprised by this. It's public advocate Bill de Blasio. He's out to a six-point lead over Christine Quinn and eight over Thompson. Now, de Blasio, he beats everybody, even when you put him in potential runoffs right now. Thompson closest to him. Wiener, for whatever it is, 50 points between de Blasio and everybody else, for that matter, in a runoff. Now, were those numbers fresh on the minds of the candidates, the Democrats? They met for yet another of their endless uh, forums or contentious debates just last night. Right now in New York, we're living a tale of two cities. Almost half of New Yorkers are living at or near the poverty level, and the middle class is disappearing. We need a real break from the Bloomberg years. As I've apologized for my personal behavior, the Speaker refuses to apologize for overturning the will of the people, for the slush fund scandal, and for the things in her professional record. That's the difference. I think it's very clear to all New Yorkers that neither me nor anybody else on this stage or any New Yorker, quite frankly, should be lectured by Anthony Weiner about what we need to apologize for tonight or ever. But New York City isn't that city of opportunity for all New Yorkers these days. There are too many people who are struggling, poor people who are being ignored, working class New Yorkers struggling to get by, and middle class New Yorkers who are barely hanging on. Uh, Speaker Quinn gave Mayor Bloomberg a third term in a backroom deal that defied the democratic will of the people. What did we get? A massive increase in the use of stop and frisk, huge fines, unfair fines on small business, and the inequalities gripping our city were ignored by the mayor. That's what we got. All right, just some of the exchanges in the debate broadcast on WBC last night. Dominic, I want to get to Blasio with you in a second, but first, a little surprised, given the numbers, that they all seem to be tra training a lot of their fight on Christine Quinn. You would have thought she was the leader um, if you just watched that debate last night. Well, in night. their mind, she is. Right. Well, that, because Quinn, this is only one poll, Richard. This doesn't really mean that de Blasio is the front runner. If there are three or four consistent polls, then yes. But as of right now, Christine Quinn is still the one. You can always tell who the front runner is based on who faces okay, the most I get attacks. That. I buy that, except I still have yet to figure out her base constituency. Uh, very few people seem to be wrapping their arms around Christine Quinn saying she's my candidate. It's a weak field. That all said, I was a little surprised that Blasio got a pass. Now, you've covered him for a long time. Mm -hmm. Have we all just underestimated this guy? That he's yes, a to a degree. To a degree. I, I'll tell you a story, a, pri a private story. I rarely tell off-the-record stories. Most people don't remember that he was Hillary Clinton's campaign manager when she went from first lady to running for Pat Moynihan's Senate seat. Yep. Mm -hmm. I pulled Bill to the side after she won. So, you know, now it's time for him to cash in, to go make a lot of money as a consultant, or to go to Washington and work for her. And Bill de Blasio announces that he's running for city council. And so I pulled him to the side. I said, Bill, what you doing? What, what, are, are, are you high? What are you doing? <laughs> why, why would you want to go to city council? And he said to me with a straight face, I, I want to be involved in politics, and I'm going to start from the bottom and work my way up. And I was like, Huh? Why? <laughs> Why? <laughs> and so maybe he knew something that I didn't know because the, the guy did a couple of terms in the city council, ran, tried to position himself to be the speaker, but now he has a good chance of becoming the Democratic nominee for mayor. Rich, let's look at Quinn's support. It's not there. It hasn't been there. The minute Anthony Weiner came out, her numbers came, came down. When Anthony Weiner fell apart the second time, her numbers didn't go back up. She does not have that base constituency. As Scott said last night on this show, she, she's the establishment candidate a bit. I've always said that de Blasio has the biggest thing going for him. He's got the liberal base. They are, the, they are very supportive. They are uh, going to show up and vote. Thompson's got the black vote, and he's got minority vote with Hispanics. They don't show up in the, uh, in the polling all the time. I mean, some of the polls are getting a little better now with their cell phone coverage and what they're doing for, for that survey. But those two guys are going to be going at this thing, and by beating up on Quinn, it just, it, it's easy base to hit into. And I think one of the challenges here is in, when you get to the runoff, really who coalesced around who? So who does Quinn support in the runoff if she supports anybody, if she gets beaten up too much? And she's an e easy target. She gave Bloomberg a third term, which in this Democratic primary is a major issue. Every poll shows it. She also has a slush fund issue that hasn't come out and bitten her yet. 
And she's also seen, fairly or not, as uh, a Ray Kelly proponent and in a Democratic primary, yeah. um, even though he's not by any means despised, stop and frisk is not a popular issue to be in support yeah. of right now. Andrew, do you see, um, these guys seem to think that de Blasio had one good poll, uh, let's not read too much into it, but I just think this is such a vulnerable field here, who's ever hot last kind of wins. Well, don't forget, you. It, you're looking to be in the top two. You're not looking to win the thing on September 10th. I don't think anybody thinks you're going to. Anybody's going to get to 40 percent, and we're not going to have a runoff. Bill Thompson so, might have a shot. So, go ahead. so you know, it makes sense that to to go after Christine Quinn to try to knock her down below that top two threshold, and then De Blasio and Thompson can go at it in the in the runoff at that point. So, I, I suspect they're going to continue to target her. I was surprised that she spent most of her energy attacking Anthony Weiner last night. Uh, well, and, and not she so had a line more. that was waiting as if he said something to her, and then uh, I think she gave him a KO on that one. Uh, can I just bring up a different issue? When you look at Christine Quinn and I see de Blasio, we talk a lot about the, the negative stuff of politics. Uh, the congressman was talking about the hot mess that is Washington and then some of the other stuff that goes on. We haven't talked at all. Quinn's lesbian. Bill de Blasio has got a mixed-race family. And in <laughs> both cases... His wife used to be gay. Okay, it was wife used to be gay. Uh, another wrinkle. Um, my point is, he's using ads whenever he can to publicize, especially with a kid with that fantastic head of hair, that this is my family. She, you would argue, can only help the more that she talks about her family dynamic. We have gotten to a point. No, she doesn't have gay support. The gay community but, does not but, support but her. But you're even making my point, and you're right, that we've gotten to a point, nobody cares, or it's not a big deal. Um, and if anything, it almost can help you. And she won't even gay support. It's not even just identity politics anymore. We've gotten to a point with electorate where, at least in New York, but I think in more places, that if you're gay, if you're black, maybe not everywhere, um, it's not <laughs> remotely what it used to be. And sometimes, if you're smart, you play up that card, like de Blasio is even playing in New York as it relates to his family makeup. I think that says something. That Voter, we are making some advances. Voters don't care so much about the lives of their candidates. I mean, they do when it's Anthony Weiner or something like that. But they care less about the lives of the candidates. They care more about their own lives. And so it's, do the candidates relate to my life? Do they understand my problems? And will they actually be able to get stuff done on my behalf? It's, it's less about, you well, know, what those relationships. And, uh, yeah. It, it well, is. It is a positive. Though, you know? for where we've come as a society. Remember, in South Carolina. Uh, the, the rumors about having an African American child yep. did end John McCain. It ended his his campaign basically for president. The whisper the, campaign and the pictures right. about his adopted daughter. Right, and so, but in fairness to both of the people that you've mentioned, Richard, um, Christine Quinn has is a proud uh, gay American. She's never uh, run away from it. But she She's doesn't always put talked that in the about first it. Sentence of every speech, no, she doesn't. But, but she doesn't hide it. Yeah. I've known her partner for about 20 years. She's very proud yeah. of her partner. And Bill de Blasio is the same exact way. Now, some have said, hey, wait a minute. Every chance you get, you're pointing out your black wife and your biracial kids. Just think about that for a second. Whether that's kids. true or not, we've got to a point where that's going to help you in a campaign to yes. show you got a biracial yes. family. I and think that says something good for you. He's been He's been consistent about that for a very long time. But don't forget the story about his wife also came out on, a, on an old uh, piece Let of cheese. Let me leave on a positive note. Let me leave yeah, on well, a positive just, note. But, but <laughs> no, no, but it's, all, it's good. But I'm just saying there are ways for this to come out and there are ways yeah. you don't. He ruled Dante out and they named the ad Dante in a great way. When we come back here, we're leaving politics. I'm going to ask these three guys, who had a pony up for the date here? Should the man do what a man has done, at least in the past here, and pick up the tab? Or should the women here at least expect to split it? We'll get into that in a viral video here that I'm going to love to get their opinion on a lot more after this.